Hello and welcome to Bob Norwegian's Chris's Engage. Um, I haven't been doing a great deal up here, basically because it's been in the high 30s and it's been far too hot. Uh, but I have done a few things. Uh, one of them is this. This is now my, uh, I'll call it a safety lid. <laughs> uh, for want of a better word, it basically covers the loft hatch uh, and it's going to stop me and any of my grandkids that come up here from falling down and breaking their neck. It's loose at the moment, but it will be uh, hinged at the bottom. And as you can see, it goes right up to the edge of where the uh, um, railway tabletop is. So all it simply does is it will swing, it won't touch that, but it will swing down. And there you are. It now covers the loft hatch. Out. and it's really thick and I have to walk on that and it doesn't even move at all so that'll be down in future so that's one thing that I've done up here uh, the other thing I've done is I've got uh, two bathrooms and a utility room in this bungalow and uh, the ducting that they use has been uh, this stuff and uh, on one section was five feet long and I've managed to you buy I bought some proper stuff for it and I've managed to cut down from the bathroom uh, the family bathroom uh, from five feet to one foot and I'll show you that in a minute uh, made a hell of a difference I've done the same on our ensuite bathroom and likewise on the uh, uh, utility room which is where the washing machine tumble dryer is so I've been doing that up here in the high 30s uh, absolutely sweating buckets but I keep reminding myself it's good for the figure so having done that I haven't done a great deal but what you can see over there is when you saw the railway track laid out I have actually marked it out on there uh, and that's what I want to talk about today so it's a very short video uh, and so I'll give you my ideas uh, and if you can tell me uh, to do anything better then please do so but i'll show you what i'm on about now so i'll just bring the camera in now you've seen this before um basically what i've done is i've marked out where the track is and i've lifted the track off and um i'll go through this nice and easy and explain what i want to do and how it's going to work before I do that, I'm going to take this off the tripod and do it by hand. So bear with me, please. Right, at the beginning, you saw the plan. Now, working from that, you've got the double track there, and that's coming down from Bognor Regis Terminal Station on an upper level. So they will continue round here, right the way round the back. And as they're going round here, they're coming down. And they will be going down right from the start as they come out of the terminus. So it's quite a long drop. I'm hoping it's going to be a 1% gradient. And then it will get round to here and it will go under the first bridge. And it will join onto this section here, which is the main line, the figure of eight. So once it joins on there, it will continue down the far end of the loft. And then it will continue along here. And then... As it comes out from underneath the terminus, it then starts to rise. And again, I'm hoping it's going to be a 1% gradient. And as it comes up and along here, it's raising until it gets to the first bridge, which is there. And then it will go over the second bridge. And then it will continue around here and then along the back, all the way down to the end of the loft, which is over there. And that will be dropping again a 1% gradient. Once it gets down to the bottom there, round behind the back of the chimney, through the uh, fiddle yard, and then it will come along underneath here. And then it will come round on a flat level, round the middle here, as you can see, again under the bridge, and then joining back on the section there. And that's how it works. So that section there is coming down. That level one there is on the level and this one here is going up so you've got a nice gradient there now my question is these 
what I've drawn here, I've used the Pico uh, gauge, is it, um, I don't think what it's called now, oh yeah, the, the, the Pico six foot way gauge. Now I've done those initially on this bit here, and as you can see on there, that is the uh, streamline, Pico streamline which is those there and you see that there now I'm not too sure sorry those inner ones there now I'm not too sure whether they're going to be too close together going round on those curves and I'm wondering whether or not I should have used the set track one which takes it slightly out now I can change it over that's not a problem at all but I would like some advice on that whether it's better to use the set track one I mean yeah it's, it's going to be streamlined track but set track gauge so that when the carriages do go around there, they're not going to hit each other. Although, I don't think they're going to hit each other on this one because of the, the size of the radius. Now, I have done the measurements. The inside radius here, that's a 70-inch curve from the inner track. 70 inches. The middle line there, which is on level, that on the inside line, that's a 74-inch radius. And the one out on the back there, eh, from the inner line again, the inner line, is an 81 and a half inch radius. So, do I use the streamline gauge, or do I use the set track gauge? Uh, answers on a postcard. <laughs> um, so that's that's my query there. As you can see, I'm back in my study now. Um, even that short period up in the loft, absolutely sweating buckets. It's, it's far too hot to work up there. And even if I had the money for the insulation, um, I couldn't work up there putting that in at the moment. It's just too hot. So that's going to be as the when it gets a bit cooler, then I'll start doing that. Um, but in the meantime, I have got a few other little projects. As you can see on the screen here. That's the bridge that I want to put over the railway line, two of them. That's a scale scenes. I've never tried scale scenes. I'm going to do a small one first of all, a small project, and then see how I get on, um, learning the ropes, basically, and then later on progress to this. And depending on how good it looks and how I get on with it, I may go further afield, like a, a good shed uh, or my engine shed. Um, the other thing, the other project I've got is uh, these here. Now they're the old Mark I Graham Farish coaches. Now as you can see I've got four of these and I'm going to do a conversion. I'm going to turn it into an EMU. I've got the graphics, um, I've got to get a motorised chassis uh, and I've got to actually strip this off to put the new graphics on. So that should be interesting. So that's a, that's a, another job I've got to do. Um, and I think really that about covers how things are going or progressing. Uh, I was going to the International Engage show up at Warwick in, on Saturday, but that's my grandson's first birthday. So I'm going to spend the day with him and the family. And uh, so I'm going to go on a Sunday. I've never been on a Sunday. Don't know what it's going to be like. Um, hopefully as good as Saturday. I um, was hoping to pick up some bargains, but uh, I don't know. I don't know whether they carry anything over to the Sunday, but either way, I'm still looking forward to the Engage show. Sadly, traveling all the way from Chichester on my own. Um, um, but anyway, not a problem. Really looking forward to it. I'll do a video of the show and uh, I'll get back to you when I've done a little bit more. All the best now. Cheers.